As a large global company, we use an enormous amount of data and analytics, um, and that can range from everything to trends, to shopper insights, um, ways we want to interact with our retail customers and developing products. Um, so we use a, a tremendous amount of information uh, and a lot of data. The, the key is, of course, the strategic interpretation of that data um, and using it in ways um, where it's filtered to the right people at the right time. So the data is accurate, it's useful, it's put in useful formats, which is you know, not a small feat, um, and that, that most importantly, it's relevant. And if you put that in the hands of very skilled people, we're able to make uh, really very timely decisions with respect to um, what it can inform. The types of strategic things that we can do, the decisions that it in fact informs, can be everything from tailoring product offerings to uh, retail customer offerings. I mean, we can have you know, iPads uh, that our field salespeople will have that are you know, right there and then can bundle an offering, for example, to intercept a, a customer and offer them something that's quite relevant to them. So it's, uh, it's a, it's a, I recognize it's a large topic, but when you sort of break it down to, to its pieces and make sure that you've got accurate information, timely information, and relevant information in the hands of people who know how to uh, use it. You certainly can get into a moment of narrow perfectionism where you're focusing on only a bits, bits of data. I think the challenge is, of course, it can lead you astray if it's in fact not accurate, um, it, if it's not structured in useful ways such that you can do something with it, um, and if it's not relevant or timely. And this has been a huge challenge um, in the sense that we have, um, you know, with mobile and so forth, really time, you know, defined timely now. Um, and so sometimes we'll, uh, we'll go so far as to have sort of command centers where we have folks who are looking at data real time um, and making some you know, judgment calls with respect to how to use it. But it, it comes from, again, a skill set where these folks need to understand that you can't just pick and choose certain pieces. You have to have that ability to react with the most relevant information. With such a large global package, goods can uh, company, we have a, a vast amount of you know demographics, um, but the beauty of some of the things like embedded in data and analytics is that you can do consumer segmentation to the levels where you can really start to tailor uh, to a particular segment of the population. At the same time, we have you know um, just uh, you know a number of different product offerings. So we truly play the entire sort of we call it the price piano. Uh, which is very important um, that you can offer products, for example, from two dollars to twenty-five dollars, depending on, you know, the value that we are conveying to um, to the consumer. So we're always looking at ways to tailor our offerings to meet the specific needs of of customer segments, and this is very helpful. You know, uh, we have at Unilever we have global reach, you know, which is beyond compare. But we're also striving for that local intimacy that. Um, information like this would bring to bear. And uh, so the balance is, is very important. Within our marketplace in, in North America, uh, you've got a number of different segments. Um, and what's great about the portfolio that we have is that we have products and, and services that really have offerings for each of them. Um, so accessibility, I would say, is one of the, the prime pieces, and as well as premiumization. So those seem like they're polar opposites, right? To be to have something that's accessible to all, and then to be able to offer premium products. But actually, it's not the case. Um, when you're talking about accessibility, you want to be able to, you know, come up with products that are specifically uh, targeted towards the consumers that need them most, and that could be a premium product, but in a sort of simple sachet that might be for you know three or four times uses as opposed to you know the larger product. So we play with things like package assortment and other things that we can deliver so that we're making sure that we deliver value at any cost. Um, and uh, certainly in this macroeconomic environment that becomes very important. And so we find that you know some of our some of our very core brands that might be slightly on the premium side from a pure price per ounce point of view are quite coveted um, by folks who maybe don't have the full means, mainly because they don't have the risks, for, uh, they don't want to take the risks for a product that doesn't deliver against their, their needs. So it's, it's one of these wonderful things where no matter what your abilities to 
uh, you know, pay, you, you want the very best. And uh, so we strive to do that and bring it in accessible ways to all. Today, I think more than ever, we are living in what we call a VUCA world, you know, the VUCA being the acronym for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And so from a leadership point of view, I think uh, having that longer and slightly broader perspective becomes very important um, because only if you have a broader line of sight and a, and a way that kind of connects the dots are you able to see emerging patterns and then be able to respond uh, and make shifts accordingly, if that makes any sense. And then I guess another valuable leadership skill related to that is with all this complexity, the skill to communicate uh, simply and to simplify those things that could be at least on surface complex, I think becomes a very valuable leadership skill.